Hello. So, uh, Watch Mojo sucks. Bad. And this is proof of it. They made a top 10 list of Dark Souls bosses. I have not seen it. But when I've seen the comments, uh, it's really bad. So let's watch. This is going to be for those who actually know about the game. If you don't, you won't understand any of these. A little loud. Raise the sun and then die. Fair enough. It's a little loud, I think. Watchmojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top ten Soul Series bosses. This is your fate. For this list, we're taking a look at the bosses from the entire Soul Saga, including Demon Souls, Dark Souls. Oh man, it's not gonna be good, is it? We're gonna mess up everything here. Entire series. Boss if you any Best games, bosses shows the rotten. It was called right, rotten something. Number ten, Flame Lurker, Demon Souls. All right, I guess that's respectable. I actually have not played Demon Souls, so I don't know too much about it. So this is probably the biggest problem. But I've heard some good things about Flame Lurker before, so probably not a bad choice. I'll take it. Magic is the flame lurker's biggest weakness, so keep those soul arrows handy and make sure to keep your distance. Don't care. There probably are better ones, but you see about anything. Nine, German, the first Whoa, this early? Alright, number nine, huh? Fine. Fine. One of the three possible final Jeez. This early? You're kidding. You. This guy is an absolute menace. That was so... Number nine. From his chair and what, could, what could the next ones be? Is fast and vicious. Actually, no, I'm not, I've not made the German yet, but what I've seen, he's really cool, and I've heard he's a great boss. So, yeah, seeing a number nine surprised me. I would expect him to be in top five at least. He is one of the most memorable NPCs in the game, and one of the most intense boss battles in the whole series. That's number eight. I'm scared. It's going to be something stupid, like... Royal Rat Vanguard. Perfect place for a hunter. Number eight, Knight Artorius. Dark no, all right, no, died. no, stop, 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 no, no. This, <laughs> this is fucking stupid. Number eight. Also known as the Abyss Walker, Artorius is one of Lord Gwyn's four famous knights. You're kidding me. Number eight. What could be above Artorius besides Gale or something? Seriously, he's such a good boss. Thanks to the miracle of time travel, the player fights Artorius years before the events of the game. The fight to release Artorius from his curse is definitely a tough one, as his massive sword and leap attacks are hard to. I am scared. What could be next after Artorius? He's such a. He's like. He's arguably the best boss in all Dark Souls. Dark Souls Two. What? You're fucking joking. The Pursuer. Pursuer was once a knight tasked with hunting down and destroying rogue hollow. Wow. This is terrible already. Alright, look. The the like, a lot of people say Artorius is the best boss in the entire series. So seeing him number 8 surprised me. But seeing him below Pursuer... I wouldn't even put him in top 10. I'd put him, like, top... I don't know, 50. <laughs> Jesus. And will instantly turn the player Alright, he's not a bad boss, but he's no fucking Artorius, alright? He curses you? It's very different than the second one. Tell like how Dark Souls 3 removed the whole cursing thing as well, the Bastilists. Which made them super easy. <sighs> alright. I wouldn't put a number 6. I'd put him like maybe 10. I know he's a good boss though, because I've heard this basically this basically the whole big dude versus small dude format really started kicking off. So I I'll put this number ten maybe if I'm being forgiving. I I wouldn't put a number six, especially above Artorius. The bigger they are, the harder they fall, however. And after doing enough damage to his ankles, the Tower Knight will come crushing to the ground, giving the player to take out his head. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, here we go. This I respect. Not. I saw. I. I, I higher though. Number five is pretty low. Well, no. Honestly, I, I don't know. I put him top ten. But I probably put him like seven, maybe. I'm not sure. I'm trying. I, I think it's the top of my head, so for consideration, I, I'd probably say five. He's pretty damn good, boss. So, first video games. All right, whatever. Win is armed with a flaming sword and fights with lightning speed. Always doing his best to stay on top of the player. What's your parry? Furthermore, his pattern is almost random. I actually beat him a pairing. I can't believe how easy it is with that. He can just cheese him so hard. It's like the one thing I don't like about Glenn. Alright, no. Look. Look, look. I love Gascoigne. I think that's how you pronounce it. I still don't know. But he is not top 10. Nowhere near it. There are so many better Bloodborne bosses. Orphan of Kulse, Ludwig. Uh, who else? I, I put, like, look, number four above Artorius in Garman? No. No, I'm sorry, but this is, this is bad. Father was once a hunter, husband Gascione, I, was, I, I don't care how you pronounce it. I just call him Gasoline. Apparently he's also a soccer player. Look it up. I actually have not. I actually didn't know that of my first playthrough, which is this one at first. I found it out later after I already killed him, and I wish I didn't, because that would that would have been so cool to see that. Number three, burnt ivory king. What? No! You're joking, Ivory King. The burnt ivory king was once the ruler of the northern. Above Artorius, Garman. Even Gascoigne. Chaos was discovered deep below the earth, threatening his kingdom. Fucking Christ. King and his knights went into the chaos, never to return. Number one, bed of chaos. Cause fuck you. The transition the player makes between the frozen kingdom of Lois to the fiery depths of the chaos is breathtaking. I mean, a lot of them you are. The oh, that is pretty close. Cool, so I'll give it that. Is aided by the remaining Lois knights against the I mean, so is the so is the Manus one, and the four kings. Eventually comes down to just the player they're like that too. King, who uses magic I think they're cooler because well it's the abyss. And, speed. and it's also Dark Souls 1, but not the second. Number two, Sif, the great gray wolf no! I love Sif. But as a fight, he's not even in top 10. Alright? As a fight, no. Above Artorius, no. Garman, hell no. Himself to save Sif he probably has my favorite theme, though, I'll say that. We're talking about him as a character, probably one of the best ones, yeah, but as a boss fight, no. He is not even close to as challenging as anything on this list. Gascoigne was harder, and he's the second boss of the game. This one's like, this one could be one of your last ones if you do with the DLC and the cutscene and stuff. Or, you know, like the fourth, maybe? I don't know. You get the point. This he's not a best fight. That the soul series is as depressing as it is difficult and will leave any animal lover emotionally drained. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. All right, next see yeah, next man is that. Yeah, he's a pretty good fight. Dark lurker. Meh. Nito, alright, why Nito all of them? To the Rodden? You're kidding. They're gonna put the edge they're gonna put the educator in the first in the first place. Number one, Dragon Slayer Ornstein and Executioner Smog. Well you know what? Okay, this one is actually a pretty good choice. A lot of people consider them number one anyway. Smog is arguably the most difficult and thus the most rewarding fight in the series. I will agree that 
was a really good fight. In terms of the actual fight, uh, that was probably one of my favorites. I still have yet to see Fully Powered Ornstein, though, which I'm going to do in my third playthrough. Because, I mean, like, I love this fight. Not as good as Artorius, but more rewarding than Artorius. It's weird. The player the value of patience and punishing anyone who lets their guard down for even a second. Ornstein and Smog are not only the best bosses of the entire Soul series, but one of the best video game bosses of all time. I won't argue that. I won't argue. I can understand. What's your favorite Soul series boss battle? Yeah. I'm gonna say, watch this guy. This one down here. That guy does the better, way better list than this piece of shit. You know what? I was gonna, I was gonna just go ranting about how this one sucks. Let's watch some of the other ones they have, cause they have, they definitely have more. Definitely. That's. They definitely have more. Oh, oops, I forgot. Uh, watch, watch out. That's not that's not what I wanted to do. Will that just work? Okay, sure. That's uh, wow. They have more than I thought they did. Ooh. Yeah, apparently I've seen this one before. Must be on autoplay. I was sleeping or something. Oh, crap! Not these guys again. Let's see who they choose. I'm not as familiar with the enemies as I am the bosses, so. I do have some pretty annoying ones, though. I think I know what number one's going to be already. Is that Flaming Dragon Tooth? You can have that? Well, uh, alright, well, I, I can't be the only one that actually liked that part in Orlando, right? Arguably one of the most frustrating parts in Orlando, let alone the game. The player is tasked with walking up a narrow path while being pelted with great arrows, which easily send you flying, resulting in obviously... I'm fine with them. You just gotta be, you know, you gotta roll, you gotta, you gotta roll... ...and have both knights on either side of you. As one will continue to fire at you while you deal with the other one. As the ledger on is so narrow, you can't really roll safely. So you're gonna have to be quick to get out of this situation alive. These SOBs do make a return in Dark Souls 3, only they're more plentiful this time around. Number oh, 9, Ironclad Soldier, aka Turtle Knight, Dark Souls 2. Okay. This is a very odd choice. Well, that is a huge delay. I don't think I saw them in the original Dark Souls. I mean, they just seem really slow. That's every enemy, though. I mean, they don't seem that difficult, I guess. Well, I'm not sure about this one. I actually have not been this far in Bloodborne. Nothing like working hard to acquire that insight, only for it to be stolen by one of these monstrosities. Insight. Right? Oh yeah, I don't use insight because I play offline. Playing online is too much of a hassle, and I don't have internet completely yet, so many reasons. Other than that, yeah, I can see this, I guess. Well, I know somewhat. I only know like a little bit about them. Are they study it. God damn. Even if you kill the brain sucker, you can't get that insight back. If you see a hooded figure in the shadows, be sure to run the other. Can't? Way. Wow. Okay, I don't use it. Number seven, Serpent Man, Dark Souls Three. Okay, but that's the third one. But say if it was the first one, I'd completely disagree with you there. In arguably the toughest area of the game. I was about to think of the snake dudes, the giant swords. They're only really hard in Duke's archives. 
fact that there are so many of them makes traversal through Arch Dragon Peak such a hassle, especially when you run into their larger counterparts. I'm not, yeah, uh, I don't know about this one yet, because I have not been in this part in Dark Souls 3. So I'm, I'm mostly just starting, I'm only at the Abyss Watchers. It's made out of anyway, plastic? It sure doesn't feel like it. It gets even more annoying when you've got to juggle dealing with these guys when you have a dragon breathing fire down your neck. Isn't it, isn't it like a shit boss, though? Ancient Wyvern, or is it just easy? I can't remember, it's been so long. Number six, Great Crab. Dark Souls what? Really? I mean, I guess they could be annoying, but I always kind of like finding them. rapidly sends shivers down our spines. Any unsuspecting player would sure to think that this thing is a mini-boss, only to die moments after beating it and see that it has respawned. With high attack and health, most players simply avoid these creatures rather than having to fight them. They're not that hard, though. They're kind of cool. I like fighting them, because they're neat, though. Maybe it'd be less agitating if they didn't burrow into the ground, replenishing their health when they're close to death. They did? Especially when you find a way to cheese them with spells. Seriously, how am I supposed to attack the weak point on the giant enemy crab for massive damage if it's underground? Really? Number five, Jailer, Dark Souls 3. I've never seen the Jailer before. What's the Jailer do? Tell me. These are genuinely creepy, as well as annoying, but mostly just annoying. It's kind of a shock at first, seeing this freaky creature walk hastily towards you, holding its lantern ahead as your max health is decreased until your bar is almost not Oh, in so they're like the, the uh, one dudes and... So the first time it does, you probably won't even know I think it's Dark Souls 3 I'm thinking of. Anyway, half a minute and maybe several tantrums maybe. later, and you'll realize that this dent to your health bar wasn't Who Who's was those dudes of Bloodborne? Uh, can't remember. Anyway, the Jailers have incredible range. And if they get close, they will brand you with their soldering iron, which is basically unblockable. Add in the fact that your health will probably basically. be low if they're close to you, then their soldering attack will I mean, basically. kill you. You better kill them quick before you give them a chance to work their magic. a way to block? Is there a way to block? You, you, got, you, you just said basically no way, so... Number four, Poison Statue Cluster, Dark Souls 2. If you thought the poison shooting statues in the Black Gulch were bad, wait until you get a load of these guys. You won't be able to tell at first, but the cluster is sitting atop a strange turtle-like enemy that follows you around while the statues shoot poison at you in all directions. That's it's annoying. It's immensely frustrating as you try to kill the creature while evading the poison. It does sound kind of annoying. It's almost impossible to damage them physically, as hitting the actual cluster does absolutely nothing. But a well-aimed projectile to the turtle's face should do the trick. Knock on wood. Number three, bone wheel skeleton. Yes. I hated them so much for first playthrough. I still hate them a lot. They There's suck. The reason that this enemy was nerfed in the following games. And you won't know what hit you until you're getting hit in the face repeatedly by a... Oh, it's in Dark Souls 3 as well? Mm. And when you've walked on, they're really hard to evade. Even if you do manage to dodge one, you can count on another one. This is later game, so I assume there's going to be more. I hate bone wheels. They're the worst enemies. They're capable of killing you in one go, unless you've really leveled up your vitality. Dodging skills are a must for these battles, so if you're fat rolling, it's time to lose some layers. Or the other way around. I, I, well, I, I used to just wear full black iron. Alright, am I the only one that actually likes the basilisks? Like, in the third game, they're bad because they don't curse you anymore, so there's no more challenge to them, I think. I kind of miss the old basilisks. If you're caught in their smog for too long, you get cursed, which results in instant death. Another unwelcome entry in an already long list of ways to die in this punishing series. Oh, you're not going to imagine that half your health if you're in Dark Souls 1? No? Okay. Subsequent next life, a struggle in the first dark There we go. As your HP is permanently halved until you find a way to cure your curse. In the first game, not third. It is, and they have to go and have your HP. Let's just be glad it only kills you in the following games. That, I guess, we're used to. And don't walk in the fog. And I, I never had that problem. I never walked in the fucking fog. I guess they could be annoying if you're too slow. I have never actually seen Three Little Pigs. Never, been, never played Demon Souls yet. That's a PS3 thing. I don't have that. Number one, Mimic Dark Souls what? series. 
Okay, look, I don't care what anyone says. Mimics are easy, and I like them, and they are not hard. Treasure chest. Wait, why does it have teeth? Why does it have arms and legs? Okay, now it's eating me. Oh, I seem to have made quite the mistake, haven't I? Just check the damn. Th all right, first of all, one thing you can just hit to make sure. You can see the chest's breathing. It's not too hard to identify which are real and which are mimics. Still, if identifying the mimic was all there was to it, it wouldn't make the list of annoying enemies, now would it? But it's also the chain, but you don't know about that one, do you, Watch Mojo? No, you don't. That health of yours. Their grapples, in and out of chest form, do incredible damage, too. Luckily for you, Dodge them. They're pretty predictable. Just have to kill them first. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips. All right, well, I mean, that was okay. No, I don't, I don't agree with some of them. I feel like some of them are pretty exaggerated. All right, what's next? Secrets never found. Or, okay, let's see, let's see where we get stuck. Apparently, I also watched this as well. Don't remember that. Is that, is that the uh, Dark Souls 3 Dark Wraith? Pretty sure that's what the okay actually you know what never mind it's twenty it's twenty now it's twenty one minutes long you probably end it right here. Thanks for guys thanks for watching. Bye.